Piaget talked about emotion and, and cognition, and what he said about uh, about emotion, cognition, is that there is no cognition without emotion. He called what he what he what he said basically is that all emotion, all all action, is driven by people's emotions. We have some amazingly compelling the kind of neuroscience uh, that's that's happening right now that shows us how. Emotional experiences, the, the quality of the relationships that children have with the important people in their lives, um, that, that those relationships and the interactions that go with those relationships and the feelings that they go, go with those relationships actually influence the emerging architecture of the brain. They, they sculpt the wiring of the brain. They, um, there, are, um, uh, there is no part of the brain, whether it be the, th the way the brain thinks or the way the brain feels, there's no part of it that isn't influenced by these interactions and, and how the brain circuits are established. Um, and that um, happens from the very beginning. So um, not only are these experiences influencing brain development, but they also very much have an influence on um, the more traditional intellectual things that we pay attention to. So we need uh, to uh, pay more attention to the social and emotional development of young children, um, not instead of um, the more traditional focus on their intellectual development and their language development, um, but um, equally important. So, uh, uh, And the reason for that is because there is a very strong science of emotional development and social development. Um, it's not just a kind of a touchy-feely kind of phenomenon that, um, that scientists can't study. Um, we have a great deal of brain research that tells us how emotions are, are kind of uh, very much embedded in the architecture of the brain and the function of the brain. Experimental psychologists began more than a hundred years ago to ask what it is, what factors there are that control learning, that basically modulate it, that make it effective, that make it stronger, that, that vivify it. Uh, and this has been a great interest in psychology and a great interest in experimental neuroscience for, for, for ever since. Often when we talk about learning, we think only of the neocortical processes involved. How are ideas and facts stored? How do we retrieve them? How do we associate them? What's rarely studied is that nothing is the subject of our attention until and unless an affect is triggered. Therefore, material is stored in the neocortex related to the affect that was associated with that storage process. And we know, for example, that if you learn under the right emotional conditions, you never forget. And the learning is very effective. A very simple sort of class of animal experiments is if you give a rat something he really desires or something it really hates, it doesn't take very many trials for the animal to learn a behavior. On the other hand, if you give it something that's just a little bit rewarding or just a little bit punishing, it can take a thousand practice tries or ten thousand practice tries to get the point right. So there are these powerful modulators of learning that apply in in every older brain. Now let's take a really big event. Kennedy was shot. Where were you? What happened? Most people that lived in that period would remember that. Man first on the moon thirty five years ago. Where were you? Remember that? Most people will remember some things about that. Maybe the flag on the moon. Maybe the first step maybe the first phrase. I'll say that in, in any such experience, in learning, in teaching, in the classroom, in anything you do in the brain, the most effective way to drive change is to have those conditions right. So if a child can't sit still, if a child is, uh, is, is preoccupied with uh, kind of feelings of sadness or anxiety, or if a child um, can't control his or her impulses, or is, uh, um, is um, kind of dealing with unresolved uh, kind of angry or aggressive feelings. That interferes. And so the extent that we're in situations that are emotionally warm, emotionally stimulating, uh, we're likely to learn better. And so uh, language is, when you, we embed language in context, it's very important. We know that children, uh, while they hear language on television, uh, and it may build their vocabulary, it doesn't build their ability to express themselves. Expression is a result of a, re of a reciprocal relationship in which there's turn-taking and which is emotional warmth. And we, anyone knows this that works with children or even spends time with children, that the more they feel comfortable, especially when they're younger, the more they'll talk. And when they don't feel comfortable, they clam up. And so the, the ability to have a warm, uh, reciprocal, uh, secure relationship uh, 
for children is critical to the, to the, the whole opening of this flower of language. That language is contextual, just like everything else, and emotion drives both children's cognitive abilities and their language abilities.